Good morning, pickleball people. This is going to be my first attempt at recording over a game. I think I've got a lot to learn here in terms of the editing and how to overlay the audio because I would love to figure out how I could pause the video and then talk. Um, I haven't figured out how to do that yet. So bear with me. Here we go. I am going to commentate. Uh, I'm going to give you my tips, tricks, strategy, but I'm also probably just going to give you a little bit of insight to, you know, what what I'm thinking at the time of what I'm doing. I get a lot of people to ask me, what are you thinking? To be honest with you, I'm not thinking. I've done all my thinking uh, the week, the months before in preparation, and now it's just reactions because, um, again, I've put myself in this situation a thousand times, and I've let my body decide what the best thing is to do in that situation. So... When I show up on game day, um, there's no thinking. My body knows what to do. All right, let's get into it. Lindsay Mattingly and myself are going to be playing Brandon High and Rick McMullen. Lindsay, an excellent ex-tennis player. Brandon High, an ex-baseball player. Myself, football. And Rick with the crazy big calves. The only reason I sped up that last one was because the point before... Rick had mentioned I never speed it up. So whenever someone thinks there's no way I'm going to do something, I usually do it. Lindsay for taking the drive. Now, I prefer to get out of the way so that my partner can take a big step to their right and take a big forehand. Usually they can dictate the point a lot better than my backhand could backing up. So here we just get into another dinking rally. I like to hit people's left foot, just kind of feel out whether, hey, you know, are they confident taking stuff out of the air or are they backing up and maybe swinging a little bit more? Um, I'm constantly poking and prodding and just kind of seeing what my opponent will give me. And if I get lucky, I'll take a little bit of luck. Lindsay takes a drive with her backhand. Her and I both feel comfortable in the transition zone. Um, we never really rushed to the net. We knew we wanted to get to the net, but at the end of the day, we'd all rather win the point than necessarily just get to the non-volley zone line. Um, and that's why you drill, 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 resets, drops, transitions in the middle of the court. So first, Rick feels pretty comfortable on his backhand being kicked What are we at, like 40 now? Okay, I've lost it. A little high. Rick wants to attack. Somehow I pop it up. Oh my goodness. And we're back in this thing. Oh, just kidding. All right, so what are we gonna do after a marathon point besides huff and puff? A little high there, I try and hit an inside out on Rick, I get the pop up and I clean it up. Uh, just a reminder, you have to assume your opponent can always get the ball back. Um, even though I love my inside out, it's not always a guarantee that it's not coming back. And as long as I can sit there ready to clean it up, because usually even if they get it back, it is a pop up, I have to be able to put that next ball away. Um, it doesn't matter what level you're at, assume your opponent can get the ball back.
a lot of people think I'm really quick, but in reality, if that ball goes up, I'm already down. Go take a look at that point again. And as the ball's going up, my whole body's going down. So I don't have to react that fast because I'm already right there where the ball's gonna be. Rick has a great backhand punch, but Lindsay feels comfortable in the transition zone, works her way up, and then I get a dink to my feet, which is very unfortunate, uh, I guess unless you're my opponent, and I pop one up. Luckily, off of the defense and all the spin that came at me, I was able to get it just barely over the net, which it doesn't matter how fast it's going. If it's barely over the net, it's hard to get back. Good shot, Rick. Good feet check. I do like going down the line if the ball goes out wide. You watch Novak Jokovic do it all the time. If the ball moves just maybe within six inches of that outside line, he's not necessarily going to hit it at the apex. He's going to wait until it's all the way on the edge, and then he's going to capitalize on the angle that's given to him. Great dink at my feet to get the pop-up. Brandon attacks my right hip. I somehow luckily play defense by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Oh, oh, nice defense, Rick. Great two angles, Lindsay. All right, here we go. Common third shot that I like to do when I'm on the left. It's just a simple diagonal dink oh that was definitely my fault sorry Lindsay. as a diagonal dink to the left foot of the left side player it keeps that aggressive person honest while also gives me plenty of time to get that ball down so here we are at the end they're down game point they decide to stack which gives Lindsay and i the idea to stack um doesn't really i guess work out the way we thought but it still works out um, thank you again for watching this. Hopefully I'll be back out with a lot more and hopefully I'll be able to edit and audio commentate, whatever you want to call it, um, a lot quicker. That way we can get these things pumping out and more people can learn about pickleball. I think just the more insight, the more perspectives, the more point of views that we can all get, the better and more we're all going to grow from it. Um, it's kind of like reading a book, but in this sense, maybe more of an audio book.